Jesus. We're going to look at a couple of scriptures this morning. Where's the piano man? A couple of scriptures and then uh, we'll be out. Amen. Amen. Uh, I was listening to the servant of the Lord as he was exhorting us this morning. And one particular word that stood out for me is the word promise. He was talking or he was making reference to that word promise. And uh, it connects with what we're going to be ministering about this morning. Can we open Judges chapter 14, verse 5 and 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32 and 33. Hallelujah. The Lord is here. I said the Lord is here. The creator of heaven and earth is here. El Shaddai is here. The one who speaks with his mouth and fulfills with his hand is here. The God who speaks of things that are not as though they are is here. The God who is a covenant-keeping God. The God whose promises have never failed. The one whose word is eternal and settled in heaven. The one who rose Jesus on the third day is in our midst this morning. Judges chapter 14 verse 5 and 6. So Samson went down to Timnah with his father and mother and came to the vineyard of Timnah. Now to his surprise, a young lion came roaring against him. Now to his surprise, a young lion came roaring against him. Verse 6. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Somebody say the spirit of the Lord. Say it again, the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and he tore the lion apart as one would have torn apart a young God. When the spirit of the Lord came upon him, the Bible says he tore the lion as one who would have torn apart a young God. Though he had nothing in his hand, but he did not tell his father or mother what he had done. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32 and 33. Are we there? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 31 and 32. 32 and 33, sorry. And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, and of Samson, and of, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith in subdued kingdoms, wrought for righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of the lions. Verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises. Somebody say obtained promises. The title of today's message is obtaining the promised blessings. Obtaining the promised blessings. Receiving that which God has declared or has promised in his word. The Bible is telling us here that by faith, or through faith, they subdued kingdoms, worked out righteousness, obtained promises, and they stopped the mouth of lions. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointed word this morning. You are ministering to each and every one of us, Lord God Almighty. We thank you for giving us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, the Bible says you open scriptures unto them and their hearts began to burn with fire. The Bible says you open their minds and they began to understand. Father, we thank you this morning that you are opening our minds to understand. For the entrance of your word brings light and it makes a simple mind wiser. Spirit of the Lord, we thank you this morning that you are enabling us to receive what is from God. You are enabling us to hear what is from God. And you are enabling us to participate this morning in that which God has portioned for us in this service. We give you praise, we give you glory and honor, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 
You see, in our walk with God, in our personal intimate relationship with God, we need to understand that there is a promise for each and every one of us. We need to understand that God is a God who's got good plans for each and every one of us. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah that his ways are higher than our ways. That his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. The Bible tells us in the book of Jeremiah that he's got good plans for us. Plans to give us hope and a future. Somebody say hope and a future. The Bible declares in the name of Jesus that his promises will never fail. He says that all the promises that he gave to Moses, none of them fell to the ground. And in the dispensation of Jesus where we are living in now, they are not just called promises. They are exceedingly great and precious promises. And these promises are fulfilled in Christ Jesus our Lord. But the challenge is, how do we experience what has been promised in our lives? How do we take what God has declared in his word to experience it practically in our own personal with God? God has declared, how can we receive it? God has declared, how can we walk in the manifestation of what he has said? This morning, we're going to look at a couple of principles, a couple of scriptures that will help us to take what is in the word and cause it to manifest in our lives. God is not God because he has spoken. God is God because his spoken word has been fulfilled. Anyone can speak, but what distinguishes God from anything else is not just the spoken word. It is the word that he has spoken with his mouth and he has fulfilled with his hand. When Solomon was praying, dedicating the temple, he said, Oh God, I bless you. God of David, your servant, my father, to whom you spoke with your mouth, but this day you were fulfilled with your hand. We are living in a dispensation where we must experience the fulfillment of God's promises. There is no time because Jesus is coming very soon. What profits God to declare a word that does not come to pass and Jesus comes and we go back and we say, Lord, we heard your word, but there was nothing to show for it. I don't know about you, but today I want God's word to be fulfilled in my life. I don't know about you, I want God's word to be fulfilled in my family. I don't know about you, I want God's word to be fulfilled in this church. Let every word that God has spoken come to pass. Somebody say, it shall come to pass. Say, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. In the name of Jesus. We read in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, that there were people who were of great faith. And because of their great faith, there are things that they managed to do. The Bible talks about the prophets. It talks about Gideon. It talks about Barak. It talks about Samson. These people experienced God in various dimensions of their work with God. But this morning, we're going to talk about people who provoked the fulfillment of God's promise in their lives, in their time. Whatever God has declared concerning your life must be fulfilled in your time. Whatever God has declared concerning your family must be fulfilled in your time. So this morning we're talking about obtaining the promised blessings. How do you obtain the promised blessings? You know, it is not everybody who used to fellowship with us in this house who is still here. It is not everybody who used to confess Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior who is still living a life of faith even to this day. There are some people who have given up on their way. There are some people who are no longer in faith because of many reasons. You might want to talk about pressures of life. You might want to talk about, you know, family challenges, you know, political, economic challenges. But there is one element this morning that we want to deal with that is causing a lot of people to go back to the world. Unfulfilled promises. Unmet promises. God, you spoke, but what I'm experiencing is contrary to what you said. And sometimes if we are not careful, we end up questioning the faithfulness of God. Sometimes if we are not faithful, we'll end up questioning the messenger of God. Did you hear from God? Was this really from God or you were really just trying to entice my emotions? In your walk with God, you will always experience such questionings in your personal season of test where you will question either the source of the word or the minister of the word. 
Sometimes if you don't believe the messenger, it will affect your ability to receive the message. So many have made a shipwreck of their faith because there is a promise that was not fulfilled. There is a promise that was not met. We have many sisters who are hating even unto this day because there is a certain gentleman who has failed to fulfill his promise. There is somebody who promised, I promise that this will come to pass. But for one reason or the other, it never materialized. As a result, you fail to receive your boas because anyone who comes after the one who hurt you looks like the one who hurt you before. As a result, you are unable to move from your pain, from your pain to the future because you are holding on to somebody who failed to fulfill a promise. But this morning I've come to declare to you that not every man is the same. As some, those who are born of God, whatever they declare, God will fulfill it. And this morning I've come to declare to you that if there's any man who has not fulfilled a promise in your life, there's one man and his name is the man Christ Jesus. Whatever he speaks with his mouth, he fulfills it with his hand. How can you stand the test of times until that promise is fulfilled? How can you experience that word which God has deposited in your spirit? That scripture, that verse you have read every day and you are saying, Lord, when will this come to pass? Let's look at Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Please read it for us, sir, Prof. Lloyd. Genesis 1, verse 28. Read that part again, sir. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth. And Please. subdue it. Read the first part again, sir. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. So God blessed them who are them, male and female alike. And he said, Be fruitful and multiply. For you to experience the manifestation of God's blessings that are hidden in his promises, you must focus on the promiser more than the promise. We have a lot of challenges now where people are expecting to get from somebody they are not in a relationship with. I can't come to Mr. Koza and expect him to give me something and yet he does not even know me. I'm not in a relationship with him. I just meet him today. I say, Mr. Koza, please help me with one, two, three, and four. The major challenge with Adam in the Garden of Eden is that he was focusing on the bliss and not on the blesser. When the blesser returned, he was no longer in the place that he was supposed to be. As a result, God is not so much interested in us focusing on what he said rather than focusing on him as the author and the finisher of our faith. Focus on Jesus and everything that is in him will become yes and amen in your life. When you are in a relationship with Jesus, it is not every promise that you must pray for. By reason of you being in him, by you being in him, by you being in him, there are things that will manifest. Who prayed to wake up this morning? Stand up and tell me. Who prayed to wake up this morning? God woke you up because he promised yeah. that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Because he promised that I will visit my people every morning. It's a promise that you are enjoying and yet you did not ask for it. Because by reason of being in Christ, you can be in crisis. When you are in Jesus, you will experience the fulfillment of God's promises because of your relationship with him. When Adam choked his relationship with God, the garden that had everything that he needed remained in the garden, but he was taken out. So if you continue calling for the garden, when you have been taken out of the garden of Eden, you will not experience it. Rather focus on the one who took you out. Focus on God. Focus on him who is seated on the throne. 
the Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter 3 that we must now fix our minds on things above where we are seated. The Bible says we must fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. When your eyes are on Jesus, everything about him will manifest in your life. When your eyes are on the one who created everything, whatever you need will be created in your life. Relationships determine the resources that will flow in your direction. When you are related with somebody who is in a particular field, by reason of relationship, there will be an impartation of things that that person carries into your life. Relate with Jesus. Look at somebody and say, be in an intimate relationship with Jesus. So focus on the promiser and not on the promise. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these other things that you are asking for will be fulfilled in your life. So not only must you focus on the promise, huh? number two, you must also know the promise. Know the promise. You must know what God said. You can't expect something that you do not know. Knowledge empowers your expectation. When you know that you know that you know that you know, you will stand knowing that God will bring it to pass. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 21. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 21. So point number one, focus on the promiser. Shift your eyes from the mountain and just look at Jesus. Fellowship with Jesus. Number two, now that you are in him, you need to know what is promised. Lamentations chapter 3 Verse 21, what does it say? This I recall to my mind. Therefore, how I hope. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. In your walk with God, there will always be challenges. But what will sustain you is what you recall to mind. Because if you can remember God's promise, it will give you hope in the value of the shadow of death. This I recall to mind, therefore I have hope. Let's go to Psalm 23. He was in the valley of the shadow of death, but he recalled that the Lord is my shepherd. He was in the valley of the shadow of death, but he recalled that the Lord will protect him in spite of what he was going through. You must know what God has said. Your understanding of the word of God will determine the level of hope patience or courage that you will stand on when times of trial come your way. You need to know what God has promised. And what God has promised is eternal and settled in heaven. He promised in Genesis chapter 1 that you are fruitful and you shall multiply. Hallelujah. He promised in Exodus chapter 15 that if you will hearken to my word and walk with me diligently, I will not put any of these diseases that are on Egypt. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. If you go in Leviticus, he says the life of the flesh is in the blood of Jesus. That's a promise. You cannot experience death when you are in Jesus because his blood gives you life. Hallelujah. You go into the book of Psalm, Psalm chapter 89, verse 31, 32. The Bible says he's a covenant keeping God. Whatever he has promised to David, he will not lie. Hallelujah. You go to Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. He says, Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For I will hold you with my right and victorious hand. What promise are you standing on? What promise are you standing on? If the word is not in you, God is not commanded to fulfill it. Uh -huh. God is bound by the word that is in you. Amen. You can't blame medicine that you have not taken for not healing you. God does not watch over the flesh. The Bible says God watches over his word. So if the word is in you, he has to watch over you. If the word is in you, he has to watch over you. Because God watches over his word. Put something in you that will command God to look after you. 
Deposit something in you that will command God to release angels to watch over you. Deposit the word of God in your life. When the word of God is in your life, the word that is in your life will command heaven to fight on your behalf. The word that is in your life will command heaven to release a blessing in your life. It is only the word that is in you that God will fulfill. It is not the word that is here. No. The word that is in you is the word that God will fulfill. Why does God fulfill the word that is in you? When you receive the word of God, it is an expression of faith in his ability to fulfill it. If you have confidence in the medicine that the doctor has given you, you take it. You take it. You don't just pack it in your bedroom. You have confidence that this doctor I was referred to by a certain man. I know that this is the best specialist in KZN. If he tells you today, go to Edendale and get certain, certain medicine. If a previous doctor told you to take it and you did not take it, this one now you will take it. Why? Because your confidence is not only in the medicine, it is in the practitioner. So when you take the word of God, it is not just an expression of your faith in the word. It is an expression of your faith in the one who wrote it. How much of God's word is in you? How much of God's word is in you? Can you recite two verses with your eyes closed? When it's time for meditation, all of a sudden you fall asleep. When it's time for generation, all of a sudden the energy comes. When it's time for pirates and chiefs, the energy is coming from nowhere. You know, yesterday we were at the ordination there, and somebody was busy sending me WhatsApp, what's the score line, what's the score line? How can darkness and light have fellowship? I'm in the presence of God. I want to know what is the score line in heaven concerning my life. I want to know what God is saying concerning my life. Zabakuti Yamantelebos. Whatever you focus on will determine the amount or the level of God you will experience in your life. I'll say this again. How much of God's word is in you? Before we blame God about that unfulfilled promise, before we blame God about that word which has not come to pass, do you know the promiser? And how much of his promises are hidden in your life? When Jesus came to his time of testing, you know, Jesus thought when you come on earth, it's all about the Holy Ghost, you know, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he's not anointed me. No, after that, the Lord said, no, let's take you to the wilderness now. Let's see whether you will continue maintaining your fellowship. When he was in the wilderness, the devil says, now, I know what is in you. So if I'm going to defeat you, I must come and manipulate that which is in you. Please remember in the book of Matthew, the Bible says Jesus was hungry. So there was no physical food in him. We are talking of spiritual food now. And the devil said, if you are the son of man, turn these stones to become bread. And the word that was in him spoke to his spirit man. The word that was in him spoke to his mind and he said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Father. In your wilderness, there must be a word that must bubble out of your spirit. Because if there is no word, you will respond in line with the enemy. Simple. You can't disobey the enemy if you don't have the word that gives you power to overcome him. The word that is in you is crucial. The word that you believe is very important if you are going to experience the manifestation of anything in your life. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at Psalm chapter 89. Amen. Psalm chapter 89. So not only must you know the promiser, and not only must you have knowledge or understanding of the promise, you must also have a background check of what the promise has done in the lives of those people he has promised before. So there are testimonies that will build your faith as you wait for the manifestation of what has been declared to you. 
Psalm chapter 89, verse 34 and 35. Somebody say, God is not a liar. Say it again, God is not a man that he should lie. Every promise from the mouth of God carries power to be fulfilled. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, so shall my word be that proceedeth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. Somebody say void. What shall he do? It shall accomplish. Whatever God releases from the throne is an accomplishing word. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, every seed, every tree shall have a seed in it and it shall produce after its own kind. That means every word that God has declared in his word concerning your life, God is backing it this morning and he wants that word to come to pass. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 1. That word will be fulfilled. I said that word will be fulfilled. I said that word will be fulfilled in your life. Though it tarries, it will come to pass. Our God is a faithful God. Jeremiah chapter 1. And then we'll look at the last two points. Papo Shikaba. Verse 11. Jeremiah 1, verse 11. Verse 12. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen well, for I will hasten my word to perform it. You will notice two things here. God is interested in the sight of his servant before the fulfillment of the word. Amen. He says, What do you see? <clears throat> he says to Abraham, Genesis chapter 13, as far as your eyes can see. So Jeremiah, I am ready to fulfill my word. You see, Jeremiah 1 verse 12, where God says I'm ready to fulfill my word. He was ready before Jeremiah said, I see an almond tree. But God does not want anything to be fulfilled in the life of somebody who, after it has been fulfilled, fails to recognize that it was God who did it. Because if God fulfills anything without your knowledge, the glory does not go back to him. Number two, God wants you to participate in that which he's doing in your life. He says, Jeremiah, what do you see? And he says, I see an almond tree. You must see the fulfillment of the promise in the spirit. And stand on it by faith. The Lord in the name of Jesus. I believe that you are ready to fulfill this word. Lord in the name of Jesus. I believe that you are able to bring to accomplishment this word in my life. Whatever you don't see can be dangerous. If you are driving and you don't have eyes, anything that is ahead of you can smash you. And you can't blame whoever smashed you or for being involved in that accident or whatever because you had no sight. What sight does in the things of God, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, the righteous foresee danger. And they take precaution. But the wicked, they go ahead and they suffer. So in your walk with God as you are waiting for the fulfillment of the promise, you must be able to see in the spirit. Matthew chapter 13 verse 16 says, Blessed are your eyes for they see, and blessed are your ears for they hear. When we are talking of seeing in the spirit, we are talking of discernment discernment you must be able to discern or understand the time because in as much as God has promised it every promise has its own time in as much as God has said it everything that God has declared has its own time in the time of men the apostles said Jesus has the time come for you to restore Israel 
And Jesus says, no, it is not for you to know. It is not for you to know. The sons of Issachar understood the time. And because they understood the times, they did not miss the fulfillment of their promise. The Bible says one day Jesus entered Jerusalem, and when he entered Jerusalem, he began to weep. And when he cried, he said, oh, Jerusalem, how I wish you knew the time. Amen. Sometimes, this is our next point, it is not that the promise has not yet been fulfilled. It is that when the time came, you were not in line. You see, if you buy a ticket at the airport here to go to Jobbeck at 6 a.m., don't blame them when you get there at 8 a.m. and say, where is the plane? The ticket is clear. 6 a.m., you must be here. You arrive at 8 a.m. You can't sue them. Neither can you blame God. Because... You have eyes, we talk about sight now. Your bed kept you away from your promise. My God. Your inability to connect with the time caused you to miss your plane. So you will continue praying for what has passed. Lord have mercy. You will continue praying for what has passed. It is gone now. Now we start talking of praying out of season. Fasting seven days for a plane that is in Joburg. <laughs> this is very serious. Discernment is very crucial in your work with God. You must understand your time. Lord, this is what you said in your promise. Help me to descend the time that is conducive for its fulfillment. Amen. Amen. Understand the time. And always align yourself with the season that is apportioned for that word. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to the next one before we finish. Barobashi. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 32, and then we close. Hebrews 11, verse 33. Verse 33. Who true faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of life. Read that part again. Stopped what? The mouth of Let's go back to 1 Samuel chapter 16, where God said, I'm no longer pleased with you, King Saul. Samuel, I'm also not pleased with you, because you are now praying for somebody who is out of season. My focus is no longer on this man. So Samuel, I know you are a prophet. You are not like the sons of Eli, but on this one, be careful. I want to honor your prayers, but your prayers for Samuel are not in line. Instead, let me teach you. Fill your jar. Go to the house of Jesse. You will see one of the sons who I've chosen there. This is the kind of prayer that I want you to be doing now. The Bible says when he arrived, he saw all the sons. He thought the first one was the ordained or the person to be anointed. All the seven came before, and none of them pleased God. And someone said, is there no one else in this house? And Jesus said, no, there's one boy who is looking after the sheep. Somebody say, one boy. One. This boy was called David. We just read in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 33, that there are people who stopped the mouths of lions as they are waiting for the fulfillment of the promise. There is no promise without battle. There is no fulfillment without fighting. Whatever you can stand the good fight of faith for will not be fulfilled in your life. Because for every promise that is released, there are messengers of the enemy that are also released. When Jesus was released from heaven, the enemy already touched the heart of Herod. 
And they said, now this guy is released. Look for everybody who is under the age of two. Because this promise was, pro was declared in the Garden of Eden. That the seed of the woman shall crush the head of the serpent. This promise was declared in Isaiah chapter 7. That a young woman shall give birth to a son. And you shall call his name Emmanuel. Herod, you are my servant. No one under the age of two must live. The promise was released from heaven. The enemy attacked it on earth. Therefore, the Bible tells us that there are women who destroyed lions that were standing in the way between what God said and the fulfillment of that word. The Bible tells us in Judges chapter 14 that there was a man called Samson. Samson was on his way to look for his wife. And as he was on his way with his mother and father, the Bible says there was a lion that came. The Bible refers to it as a young lion. Because it was hindering his journey. You know, every promise is a journey. As he was on his way to that word being fulfilled, there was a lion that came. And Samson discerned that this is not from God. And I must not entertain this. The Bible says he tore it with his own bare hands. David was anointed in the house of Jesse to be a king over Israel. But from the time he was anointed, he was not ordained immediately. And after he was anointed, there are processes that he had to go through. And there are lions that he had to defeat. He says, when I was looking after my father's flock, there are lions and bears that used to come, but I would tear them with my own hands. If you have confidence in the promise that God has declared over your life, you will have all the joy and the courage to tear the lion that is trying to stop you. Amen. Whatever is standing in the way of what God said and what you want him to fulfill in your life, you must fight it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. You must fight for that word because God's word is eternal and settled in heaven but the enemy is against the fulfillment of God's blessings over your life. Look at somebody and say fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Say fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. The last point is in the book of Luke chapter 1. Fight for that promise. Fight for that child. Fight for that marriage. Don't give up on God. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above. More than you can ask, think, or imagine. Fight for your family. Zavazovia. Fight for your marriage. Fight for your health. Fight for this church. There is a promise that God has released over this church. You must fight. Hallelujah. We have no time to gossip. We have no time to be divided. We have a battle to fight. Amen. When you understand that you do not have time, you choose your battles with wisdom. Because it is not everything that you must fight. Some battles are brought your way to take away your focus from the main thing. Where are we now? Luke chapter 1, then we close. The last point is we desire to obtain the promised blessings of God. Luke chapter 1, verse 31, 34, and 35. And then we close. And behold, thou shalt con conceive in the womb, and bring forth his son, and shall call his name Jesus. So that's the promise from the Lord through his angel, angel Gabriel. He's saying to Mary, you shall conceive, you shall give birth to a son. And you shall call his name Jesus. That's a promise. Somebody say promise. promise. Verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Every promise from God will always be questioned by your mind. Whether God can really do it or not. If your battle stops in your carnal mind and does not go down to your spirit man, 
you will not have strength to fight for the fulfillment of the promise. So Mary asked the angel, how shall this be since I know no man? So she was placing the fulfillment of the promise in the ability of men. And the angel said, no, I have to address this Mary before I go back to heaven. What did he say? Verse 35. The last point before we close, as we desire to experience the fulfillment of God's promises, we must always leave room for the Holy Ghost. Always leave room for the Holy Spirit. It is not everything that man can do when asked Mary. It takes the Spirit of God. If you read the Bible from Genesis right up until the end, wherever the Spirit of the Lord descended, there was always a word that was fulfilled immediately. Amen. Go and read your word. Every manifestation of the Holy Spirit provoked the fulfillment of a certain word. Amen. When Jesus was baptized and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, immediately he went into the synagogue and the scripture was given to him and he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news the Bible says Jesus closed the scroll and he went to sit down people looked at him they marveled at the words of grace that flowed out of his mouth and Jesus said to them I tell you the truth this scripture I have declared to you today is fulfilled in your hearing he declared fulfillment after he received the Holy Spirit Acts chapter 2 when the Spirit of the Lord came upon them on the day of Pentecost he did not just come on any other day he came at a very crucial time to fulfill the words of Joel Peter said what has happened today is a fulfillment of what was spoken when the Holy Spirit came in the tomb of Jesus, he did not come on the first day, he did not come on the second day, he came on the third day to fulfill what was promised. That my son who not wrote in the tomb, whenever the Holy Spirit has come, he wants to fulfill something. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of fulfillment. When he comes, there is a child that must come out of your womb. And the child must be called Jesus. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, there is something that must bubble in your spirit, man. There is a level of expectancy that is expected when the Spirit of the Lord descends because he has not come to play around. The Spirit of God has come to fulfill. The Spirit of the Lord has come, has come to help to glorify God by fulfilling what Jesus has commanded us to do in his time. The Spirit of God has not just come for tongues. He is bigger than that. The Spirit of God has not just come for prophecy. He is greater than that. The Spirit of God is God. Because God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the Lord is that spirit. Wherever he is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord is necessary for you to experience the fulfillment of that promise. It is not by might, it is not by power, but it is by the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Develop a relationship with the Holy Ghost and your life will never be the same again. Develop a relationship with the spirit of the living God and your life will never be the same again. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, Romans chapter 8, if you need to pray, he will help you to pray. When the Spirit of the Lord has come upon you, if you need wisdom, he will give you wisdom. When the Spirit of the Lord has come upon you, if you need courage, you will be bold and courageous. You will be stronger. You will be able to tear the mouth of lions because the Spirit of the Lord, when he has overshadowed you, you will be able to give birth in the absence of Joseph. The Spirit of God has come to replace Joseph. Karipatosia. Whatever you don't have in your life, the Spirit of God is able 
Somebody said the spirit of God is able. The ministry of Jesus was kick-started by the presence of the Holy Spirit. He did not preach on his birth. He did not preach when he was young in Nazareth. He preached when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Why? Because in the realm of humanity, he came to teach us that though he is God and though he is 100% man, you need the Spirit of God. You need the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon you. For you to achieve anything in your life, it takes the Spirit of God. Somebody say, it takes the Spirit of God. It takes the spirit. Say, it takes the Spirit of God. As a parent, you need the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Our children are clever now. You need to know, you need to discern, you need to understand the times and be able to receive the anointing of God, the Holy Spirit, to know how to deal with that child. We are dealing with principalities and powers now. Uh, Revelation chapter 12, when a child was born, uh, there was a dragon that was released after that child. In our schools now, you don't know which school to take your child to. I don't know here, but you know, I know where I'm coming from. You, you need to discern, you need to pray. Because it is not safe now. Because the enemy can take hold of the church or the school through the principal. He can take hold of the school through the teacher. He can take hold of the school through the friends of your children. There was a certain boy whose parents did not give him food because they did not have food. So there was this mother who gave her child a bottle of raspberry, you know, raw red, that raspberry. And she put blood. This is a true story. She put blood in that. The moment the child took that, the child began to experience nightmares. And the teacher confessed to the parents, your child never used to fail like this. What has happened to your child? Look at his marks last term. But when the spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you will be able to govern what is yours. When the spirit of the Lord is upon you, you will be able to speak to those principalities and powers. You shall not touch my children. You shall not touch my house. You shall not touch what is your mind. Because the Bible says, touch not the anointed of the Lord. And do God's prophet no harm. You need the spirit of the living God. Let's rise up and we are going to pray. It is not by might, it is not by power. It takes the Spirit of God for that promise to be fulfilled in your life. It takes relationship with the promise, knowledge of the promise, fighting the good fight of faith. And after having done it all to surrender to the Holy Spirit, because He's the one who enables you, He's the one who strengthens you. Mikabose.